How's it going everybody? I'm Driftwood from Driftwood Gaming. We're gonna do our special request RPG Maker Envy tutorial. This is for Tutorial Tuesday! Um, this is for Morkong Moore. He wanted a skill that would basically heal for 10% of the damage um, that you deal. So it's an attack skill, but it heals the whole party for approximately 10% of the damage you deal. So I made a quick one here with the action sequence and a damage formula. Uh, I'll put a list of all the plugins you need in a second. So let's take a look at it. This is called Heal Strike. You're just gonna attack, deal damage, and heal for about 10%. So that's pretty much it. You see that we have, uh, we'll look, take a look at it again. We have um, a little action sequence where you jump across and you hit the target, and then um, it plays an animation and a sound effect, and it flashes the target white, and it'll throw an animation across all of your party members, and then do a damage pop up and heal everybody approximately 10% of the damage you deal. Pretty cool. There's a couple things you'll have to do to, to make it work right every time. So let's take a look at those things real quick. So you're gonna need one variable, uh, a spot for one variable to make this work. So anywhere you want on any event or in your common events, just go to your, go anywhere, you're gonna delete it. Go to uh, control variables and up here, just find a spot where you're not using anything and call it whatever you're going to name the skill. You know, just name it something so you know that you're using it for something. I'm using 281 and you'll see I'm, I'm referencing that number. For you it'll be different, put whatever number you want for that. You, you, you just hit OK, OK, and you can hit OK the third time and then just delete it. Because you, you're not really putting it anywhere, you're just kind of like finding it and naming it. So once you've got your variable, um, we'll hop over to skills real quick. We're going to use some plugins. Actually, let's do that quick. So, you're going to need Yanfly's Core Engine, Battle, uh, Battle Engine Core, Action Sequence Pack 1, but you might as well get all three of the Action Sequence Packs so you have more ability. And you're going to need Damage Core. You're going to need that Damage Core right there. So, I think that's all you actually need, but, you know, just get whatever ones that look good to you. Um, there's a lot of them out there. So, inside the skill, give it whatever type you want, cost you want, it's all up to you. Scope, set it to one enemy. Since we're using a, um, a target action, you want to set the scope to one enemy. Occasion, probably only battle screen, it would only make sense that way. Um, it could be certain hit, physical attack, uh, magical attack, it's completely up to you however you want to do it. Actually, I'll make it a physical attack. Give it the animation that you want to play right here. This is going to be the animation that actually um, plays when you land at your target and it's going to hit on your target and that's it. Um, for any other animation that you want to play on your targets, you can have different animations play if you want or you can just have the same one play across all of them. So you'll pick that animation. So you're going to have this animation, a different animation for the healing thing, and that's basically it. So two animations, one variable for this. So the, the code you're going to use, and I'm going to make, a, I guess I'll just copy paste the code into a text file and put a download link. So just download link this code if you don't, uh, but I will go through it real quick just so you can see what we're doing. I'm opening up a damage formula. You have to set the type to HP damage, whatever element type you want, doesn't matter. You don't even need to give it a damage to an element type actually. Um, you don't need to put a formula here. Um, you can put any variance and you can allow critical if you want. The damage formula will be overwritten by the damage formula note tags you put in the, the note tag for the skill itself. So I'm creating a variable, calling and healing, setting it to whatever I want the damage formula to be. You can actually probably just set healing underneath it, var healing equals value divided by 10. That might work too. I haven't tested that, but I would imagine if you already declared value, it would work that way as well. But anyway, here's your uh, damage formula. We're taking the damage formula, encapsulating it in some parentheses, dividing that by 10 to give you 10%. If you wanted to do 20%, you would divide it by 5. If you wanted to do like only 5%, you divide it by 20. If you wanted to do 50%, you divide it by 2. Hopefully you get how that works. Easy stuff, right? Then we're going to say value equals. This is going to determine how much damage is assigned when you action effect or when you issue the damage. So the same number you'd put up here is the same number you're going to put right here. You can use A to reference your, your, um, the source, the user, and you can use B to reference the target. So simple attack, this is an example, you put whatever code you want, four times the user's attack minus the target's defense. Since I set it to physical attack, I guess that makes sense. But you're also putting that same thing in here, dividing that by whatever. 
then you're going to take uh, that value and store it into a game variable's uh, value because you can't use this variable, uh, temporary variable, inside your action sequence. You actually have to store that data um, in, in a game variable so you can reference that game variable later. So we're going to do that. We're going to do dollar sign game capital V on variables that set capital V on value. Now this is the number that, remember I said find the variable and find one and name it. This is the number I picked, variable 281. Whatever one you picked, just put that number of the variable there. Put a comma and then type in the name of the temporary local variable that we created right there. So I'm saying set the value of uh, variable 281 to whatever value we declared up here. Cool. So that's the damage formula. That's going to happen before it issues the damage. But in order for that to work and heal the party, we got to use an action sequence. So we're going to do a setup action. We're going to display action. We're going to make targets immortal true. Hide the battle, uh, the heads up display, and then that's it for the setup action. Open up the target action. We're going to make, um, if it's a ranged attack, um, we're basically using our basic attack one, you know, go across the screen. But if it's like a gun or a bow and arrow or something, you won't have to jump across the screen. You'll just stay where you are and boom, go. So we're going to say if the user dot attack motion is not equal to missile, um, jump the user, whatever. You don't even have to use jump, but I thought it looked cool. Jump 250, comma, over 25 frames. Move the user to the target's front 25. Um, you could have them jump to the back, you know, just whatever. Uh, otherwise, perform start. So then we end that loop, that if statement. So if, blah, 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 else, end. Then we're going to zoom the camera. Oh, you actually would need uh, action packs two and three because we're going to do zoom too. So we're going to do camera screen, target, front, center, 25 frames. Camera focus, target, front, center, 25 frames. Wait for the movement. Motion attack user, so he brings out his sword or his bow or whatever. Attack animation target and wait for that animation. That's going to call this animation. Then action effect. That's going to issue that damage right here. That's going to issue the value. Then we're going to animation whatever number you want here. It's not 533 for you. It'll be whatever animation number you want to play for the healing effect that goes ding, 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 ding on all your party members. Whatever animation number that is, just put that in there right there. So if it's 10, if it's 100, whatever. For me, it's 533. And then you're going to use a colon and put in actors. That's going to say everybody who's not dead. Um, so then we're going to wait for that animation to finish. And here's the code to actually heal the party members. We're going to type in HP plus variable. That's one line right there. Or, you know, no space between plus and variable. HP plus variable. Then we're going to use that same variable number that we stored. Remember when we put it in the common event we declared? Uh, and we deleted it, whatever, we're going to use that one. 281 is our variable, the number we're using. So you can also use minus to, to, to deal damage to the whole party if you want to. So minus variable would deal damage, plus variable would uh, add life. So add life to what? We want to add life to all the actors, comma, and do we want to show the damage? Do we want to show the numbers pop up? If you do, then you just type in show. If you don't, you just put in actors and nothing after that. Then motion thrust user enemy attack the target or i'm sorry enemy effect you don't have to do this but this is extra stuff it looks cool enemy effect colon target comma whiten and it's just going to make them flash a little bit then wait for that effect then motion victory actors not user so your party kind of like cheers as they're getting healed or probably right as the numbers are disappearing they're cheering and then you're going to motion evade user you don't have to do that that's just an extra little you know, makes it look more animated. Wait for the pop-ups to finish, then put the battle head back on and then in the target action. Like I said, I'm going to put all of this in a text file and it should be in the download, uh, and it should be in a download link below. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it, okay? Let's see, what else would you have to do? I want to make sure I don't forget anything. Um, oh yeah, okay. So at the beginning of your game, when you you know, you auto run this event to control all your variables, turn on all your switches, and you initialize everything, include that as well. So at the bottom here, you can see that I've got uh, control variables that 281, we're going to set it to a constant of zero. That's just going to initialize it. So if you call it at any time in the damage formula or, you know, in an action sequence or whatever, it'll already be initialized so it won't have to look for that and reference it. Um, I mean, when it does go and look for it and reference it, it will have a value, a value of zero. Otherwise, it may heal for zero if you don't do this. 
This is a real easy initialize event. You just create an auto run event on the first map that you're going to start. And then at the end of that auto run, you do a self switch turn on, then open up a new page that has the check self switch A. And this is an action button. And then OK. And then this is an invisible event. It just sets up all of your variables and declares them and, you know, show text at the beginning. You know, right before you do your little intro, you just declare all your variables. And that's how you do it with an auto run. Remember, self switch. And then this page checks that and you were onto a new page. Boom, that's basically it. And then we'll take a look at the skill one last time. And you get a cool, a pretty cool little effect. Um, on that skill, you would just award it to your players however you would normally award it by leveling up or whatever. We can close this music courtesy of OC Remix on that. So we'll take a look at the heel strike one more time. Jumps across, lands, does one animation, issues the damage, throws animations across the party, and then it, uh, does a, a healing damage pop up. One last time. You can actually hit your party members if you're using the Antfly's targeting core. See, he dealt damage, right? He was it killed him basically. <clears throat> but because before the the thing had a chance to finish, the the code came in and healed him. So I thought that was kind of cool. Anyway, that's it for this tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial and would like to see more tutorials, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I've got lots of RPG Maker Envy tutorials. I do first impression videos on your games. If you would like me to play test your game, um, or if you would like me to do a video on your game, please deploy it and then play test the deployed version because they act different from play testing inside the engine, um, as we found out several times. Um, yeah, and I will. I will check it out and most likely make a video on it. Um, not all of them will be turned into videos, but if you know, most of the time it does. But yes, thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. That's why these video, these tutorials are still happening after all this time, because you guys want to see them and you're, you guys are uh, backing me, and I really appreciate that. If you don't support me on Patreon, that's fine. Um, but please consider doing so. It will also increase the frequency that these come out if we get past that second goal, which is coming up pretty close. I think maybe like one or two more depends on uh, how much the it is but pretty soon there'll be more tutorials i imagine it, it going that way um you guys are awesome thank you so much for watching thank you for the support i appreciate it we'll see you guys in the next one Bye bye